But it's okay, because if this video gets 12 likes, I will buy another 12 inch drum head. Good morning. Today, as promised, I will be changing my 12 inch drum head with a brand spanking new drum head. I'll be doing that as well as answering 10 random questions from my subscribers. This is gonna be fun. We like to have fun here. documentary on how the Commandant's own quad line changes our drum heads and what techniques we use. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go check it out. And I'm going to be kind of doing the exact same thing in this video, although I just need to change this one head. So here's a good real life scenario. Let's say you're in the lot warming up and you're about to go on in like 10 minutes and all of a sudden, BAM! Your 12 inch drum head breaks on your tenors. Now obviously you don't have time to do a full head change on every single drum, you just gotta change that one. So here's what you can do. But first let's answer one random question. Peanut Productions asks, do you like ducks? Yes. But I like chickens better. So first thing you're gonna want is a high tension drum key, such as this one. All right, then we're gonna get in here and detune all the lugs in a star-shaped pattern, not all the way, all at once, just like a turn each. And the reason you want to go in a star shape is so that you don't jack up and warp the rim real fast, because if you just detune and uncrank one side, then the rim is going to kind of warp and bend and it won't be good. And if you look super duper closely at these ribs, these are actually pearl ribs. I think you can read that right there. Yeah, on the drums one, two, three, and four of this set of tenors, I replaced the Yamaha rims with pearl rims. And the reason for that is because I don't like Yamaha rims at all. They're really high and obnoxious. You can see I didn't replace the Spock drums. Those rims go up a lot higher than the Pearl rims do. And when you're doing sweeps and insane stuff on the tenors, you know, that little centimeter, that makes a huge difference between either hitting a rim or not hitting a rim. And I don't want to hit rims. So I replaced all of my Yamaha rims with Pearl rims, except for the Spock, because I don't really do that many sweeps off the Spocks. Next question is from Matt Newberger. Why do you say have a good morning at the end of every video? And what should I do if I'm having a bad morning? I always say good morning because it's always a good morning. And if you're having a bad morning, then just listen to me and have a good morning. I hope that answers your question. Okay, let's do another cranky poo on the drums here. Star pattern. Okay, so after just those two cranks around, these are already basically finger tightened, which means like I can just use my finger to tighten and untighten it at this point. So now we're pretty much good to take the rim off. But first, our next question comes from Seth Brewer. What's the best thing to practice if I plan to audition for a DCI core, other than audition music, etc., rudiments, or stick tricks, etc.? I made a really super good video where I wrote a bunch of warm-ups out, and you can go and practice those as much as you can. A couple of books that really helped me when I was first learning was Bill Bachman's Rudimental Logic, or if you're a quad player, Bill Bachman's Quad Logic. The Rudimental Cookbook is also a good one. Most drum corps also have a book published by their percussion caption head. You can check those out as well. Snarescience.com has a crap ton of exercises. There's like so much freaking information out there. Like, as long as you search for it, you'll find it. But if there's a certain technique, book, or packet that you think that he should play, please compose that in the comment below. All right, let's undo all this. Take this ribbon head off. Hello morning people, my purpose has been fulfilled! I can now go in the recycling can. Okay, goodbye. Next question is from Eternal Whispers of the Wind. What is the most idiot moment you've had since you joined the Marine Corps? So that would definitely be the very, very first day I got to my unit. So coming out of boot camp and then going into your unit, you're basically like, stupid. Like, you learned all this crap, you follow all these orders, and then you gotta suddenly think for yourself, like, what is this? What's going on? So I get there, I was on tour with the Commandant's Own, they were in the middle of their spring training, and they start telling me about all these, like, different, like, clothing policies and what we can and can't wear. So basically, appropriate civilian attire, you need a collared shirt tucked into khaki shorts or pants that have a belt, and you need dress shoes or sperries. So I'm about to go walk to the MCX, and I put on my appropriate civvies, and BAM! My freaking belt breaks. The one belt I had 
broke it. So I guess I could just wear pants that don't have a belt, and that would be the next best thing until I get a belt. So I put on some sweatpants, I tucked my freaking polo shirt into the sweatpants, and also in boot camp and MCT, you have to wear these glow belts, like a reflective belt when it's nighttime out. So I put that crap on, because I thought we still had to do that. So I was on my merry way to the MCX, looking like a total chode. Like, I was, I was just a bicycle helmet away from being Steven Sassafras the Sixth. And then a very nice guy in my unit saw me and stopped me and told me to not do what I was doing. And yeah, everyone found out about that and made fun of me for a long time. They still make fun of me about that. Okay, next step, we are going to unwrap. Okay, done. New 12 inch head, we're gonna put this bad boy on. Logo faces up. Right, because the logo's face down on drums three and four because those are not where the playing zones are. Logo's on one and two, face up because that's not where the playing zones are. Okay, and my rim was like this. So I'm gonna rotate that over one lug. I like to rotate the rim one lug every single time I do a head change, and that will also prevent the rim from warping as fast. Next question is from Not Meme of the Week. I'm going to be a sophomore drum captain next year. Any tips on how to be respected by upperclassmen while also not being seen as a bossy person? Yes, this can be an issue in your high school drum line. Like, pretty much everyone's gonna be your friend and you have to be in charge of them. So honestly, the best thing you can possibly do is make sure you are on top of all the stuff. Like, learn all the music before everyone, memorize the drill, have your, you know, your dot book done, have your music learned and memorized, and lead by example, basically. Like, do all the right things so that your peers will follow you and do what you do. And you're gonna need to give comments and corrections to your peers, so you gotta find a way to do that in a way that does not come off as bossy and mean. Like, you gotta, you know, be nice about it, be respectful, but also be informative. It can be tough to do that, honestly, so the more you try to do it, the better you'll get at it. You know, you can ask your instructor or your band director for some help if you're struggling to figure it out. Okay, next step, we are going to finger tighten all of the tension rods into the lug casings. Next question is from Jake Oakley. Is Steven Sassafras secretly gay? Sorry if this offends you. That does not offend me. I wouldn't ask you guys to ask questions if I would get offended by them. But you might remember from my boot camp video that I said this. Sexual orientation reveal at 696969 subscribers. And the sexual orientation reveal is not just for me. It is for all of my characters. Every single one, you're gonna find out what sexual orientation they are. So I will answer that question when I reach 696969 subscribers. It might be a while from now. I don't know. It might not be. Subscribe. But speaking of that boot camp video, I told four stories, and one of them was a fake story. And I've already confirmed that stories number one and four were true. So it's just down to these two. And Tony G thinks that the second story is the fake one. So... Story number two is... Uh, hey, True! Sassafras. This actually happened. Sassafras. <laughs> oh, yeah. he hello, sir. <clears throat> Tell me. You guys want to get weird in here or what? So sorry, Tony G, you were wrong. Mm. Story number two is confirmed true, which means that story number three is the mm. fake story. Perhaps this one did not happen. In. What, no proper greeting? Okay, turn around, face the wall. Oh, geez, oh man. Are you a drill instructor? Face the wall and sing the Marine Corps hymn. And don't stop until I tell you. Oh my goodness. Are you disappointed? Compose a comment and let me know. Okay, so we're now gonna apply a little bit of tension to the head. So right now the tension rods are just screwed in there. Um, so we're gonna get them all the way finger tightened even though I'm not doing it with my finger because that'll take forever. So I just put the drum key here, just twist it until it stops twisting. Right about there. Next question is from McSpy35. What was your inspiration for the creation of the characters? Scotty Masked Guy Sergeant Butthole. That is a fantastic question, and I think somebody else asked that the last time I answered questions. So this is actually like kind of a long story for each of them, but the abbreviated version is that some of these characters were made from a prank that I did where I made up a whole high school drum line. Some of them were just made for specific videos, and some of them were just randomly thought of at certain points in time. But one of them is based off of a real person, just one of them. Leave a comment and see if you can guess which one. However, I will reveal the full story of each character when I reach 100,000 subscribers. So make sure that you click that subscribe button. 
Because before we get to 100,000, we gotta pass 69,420 subscribers. And at that point, I will do the 69er cadence and a Tinder profile reveal. Okay, so now we're gonna actually apply some good pressure to the head. So I'm just gonna take the key and rotate it all the way around one time. Star pattern on each lug. And now I'm going to check the tuning. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put my finger in the center of the head to deaden it a little so I can hear the attack better and then just go around. Okay, so that one is a lot lower than this one. So I'm gonna tune that up as well as the lug directly across from that because we want equal tension directly across and that will prevent the rim from getting warped as fast. This one's a little lower in here too. Next question is from Glenn Bailey. Will you ever tell us how you lost your virginity? Or do you still have it? Guys, this is a family friendly, half Christian, half Jewish channel. Okay, like that story is not very family friendly. So as far as any of you know, I'm saving myself for my cow bill because I'm in love with her. Okay, so now we're gonna do a half twist around on each lug, same pattern. Cool, and honestly, the more you tune drums and do that, the easier you'll be able to hear which lug is lower or higher. It took a while for me to figure out, but since I do it so much, I'm pretty fast at it. Next question is from Liam Hargis. What is your middle name? I'm guessing it starts with an M. Eric M. Carr Productions? Mm -hmm. Let's see if any of you can guess it. Pose a comment right now and guess what my middle name is. If somebody actually gets it right, I will let you know in the comments. Liam's guess is Michael. Ah, oh, crap, he's right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're just gonna rinse and repeat this process over and over and over until the drum head is where I want it to be. Okay, so if I was just tuning the heads fresh, I would probably just leave it right there. Like, you don't want to crank the heads to the max immediately, usually. You just want to give it time to settle so you can hear that plastic popping. So, we're gonna do this. All right, this is emergency action plan, right? If you're about to like go on in a couple of minutes, you're just gonna play loud 16th notes in the zone of the new head, as long as you possibly can. A few moments later. Okay, so what that does is that kind of stretches the plastic out a little bit in the zones where it would be stretched out when you're actually playing on it, so that you can attempt to get it in tune right before you go on. So let's see where we're at here. Yeah, from just that couple minutes of me playing on it, these two logs are already significantly lower because that's where we just played. We can hear that plastic stretching. Oh man. All right, that's pretty close. It's good enough. And if you're in a tender line, like more than one person, then this drum, it might be in tune when you go on to the performance, but as the show goes on, it'll probably get lower and lower. So I would recommend tuning this one a little bit higher than the other sets of drums at the beginning so that it'll start out of tune on the high end. And then for most of the show, it'll like slowly go in tune. And then probably by the end, it'll be a little bit out below. So if you start with it at the same pitch, it'll be like way, way out below by the end. So that's some stuff to consider in our emergency action plan of tuning. And last question is from Watch My Vids If You're Bored. How is your love life going? Oh, dude, it freaking sucks, man. Like, okay, so I'm in love with my cowbell, right? Like, I can't marry an inanimate object in the United States of America. That's ridiculous. Like, it's 2020, people. Why can't we do this yet? Although I did read some random article about some guy in India that married his pillow. So maybe I'll just go to India so I can marry my cowbell, and then I'll live happily ever after, and then I'll also get military basic housing allowance pay. Watching. I hope this video was informative and random and weird. If you liked it, make sure that you click that subscribe button and ring that liberty bell and click that like button. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt design such as this one. I will leave the link in the description. And have a good morning.